Hi, my name is Kenneth Wajda. I'm a professional photographer here in Colorado. Welcome to another one of my photography talks. Today I want to talk about a camera, specifically the Icoflex. I believe it's a Model 2A. So I was just out in New Jersey. I was visiting friends and family and this is, if you're ever in New Jersey, near Lambertville, New Jersey, there's a great antique market called the Golden Nugget Flea Market. And this was on a table for $35. The shutter seemed to be working and then it stopped working. And I said, I'd give you 25 for it. And he said, okay. And I was able to find out through a little bit of research that this camera was built with a certain kind of engineering to prevent people from double exposing and the way that they did it, they had all these uh, safeguards in place, which one of them is it won't fire once it reaches number 12. So I was able to reset it. I had film with me because I had a roll of flex with me on that trip. So I put a roll of film in this and I started shooting. And the thing that drew me to this right away was when I looked inside the viewfinder, it actually has a little catch to release it. When I looked inside the viewfinder, the ground glass was bright. We were outside on a sunny day, I'm looking outside, and a lot of old roller flexes and roller cords, if you look inside their uh, ground glass, their screen, it's actually, only the center is bright and the edges get really dark. And it's hard to work with that. And this one, the whole screen was bright. Plus it has these cute little rounded corners. So I thought that was a really cool screen. And if it shoots okay, it's got a Tessar lens on it, a Zeiss lens, and I like that quality on a roller flex. And for $25, I'll shoot a roll of film. So while I was out there, I made a point of burning through 12 frames, and I'll put a couple of those up on the, on the comments below so you can see, but this is a good alternative to a Rolleiflex. I don't think, <clears throat> I looked them up, I don't think they're going for more than $75 or $100, and uh, it has quirks. It has a real specific way that you have to load it. Um, I didn't know that, and so I just loaded it by guessing and all of my film came out with all of the frames stacked with slight overlaps on the first three quarters of the of the roll of film and then the last quarter was blank so it certainly didn't have proper spacing but I'm told that that's probably because it wasn't loaded correctly and there are very specific ways it has to be loaded and I follow those directions to get it loaded again and until it was loaded right, the shutter would not fire again. So if somebody was trying to test it, they would think it's broken, but it wasn't. It's because of the film and all of the uh, safeties that they have it built into it that it wouldn't work. And so that was a, a, re a real good find and I really like the quality. Like I said, I'll put a couple of pictures up and I think that it's uh, comparable to a Rolleiflex for, you know, a Tessar lens. It's got a focus that's a little stiff but it's usable and overall the fact it's got a bright screen makes it a real nice user so that's the Icoflex I believe from my research it's a model 2a and they had a whole lot of different versions of them and they had a whole lot of different names and different letters after them it was very confusing but it's a solid built camera if you're looking for an oldie if it comes across your way and you're looking to see if it's worth it, check it out. If you can't get it to fire, it just might be some of those safeties in place. All right, that's today's photography talk. If you're enjoying these, hit the subscribe button and we'll talk some more. Thanks so much for watching.